In this video, I'll be teaching you how to use Comsol to model the quartz shear oscillator. We start by going to the model wizard where we select our space dimension. So we're dealing with a 3D model, then we then select our physics. So our physics will go to electromagnetics. Electromechanics, sorry. And we'll select a piezo electric effect, which will be under solid mechanics. So we've added our piezoelectric, piezoelectricity as shown in here. Then we move to our steady. Then we click done. Okay, we go want to start finally inputting our parameters. CS to be one, PF. We'll add RO R zero. I'll be twenty five UM and add H zero. I'll be twenty four UM. Zero. So these are the parameters we'll be using for our work. And we go next is to click our mesh and want to import. So we browse. And we import it. Search for thickness. And we'll go up. And there's a search for thickness. Okay, so this. So we import the thickness shear quartz oscillator mesh. Okay. So when we import, we see our, our oscillator mesh. Add an integration. Where we select a point. Okay. 
to be eight. Let me point eight. This point. That's point eight. If I work. So we'll add an explicit to as well. Clean up all surface. Select the adjacent boundaries. Get all domains. Coordinate, let's add rotated. We have alpha. Beta of beta of is zero point zero one two five point two five. One two five one two five degrees. Go to materials and uh, the material. Quartz. Seventeen. It's eight. Okay. This is the material we add. Go to the piezoelectric material, we go to the coordinates. We want it to be able to take the system too. Add mechanical damping to as well. The loss factor should be isotropic loss. We want this to be user defined to one minus three. Go to physics and we want to add physics. We add electrostatics, boundaries, we want to add the terminal. Terminal will be at four. Terminal that we want it to be a circuit. Back to boundaries, you want to add another terminal. Same for, and that name will be terminal one. That type will be a voltage as well. Voltage will be 10. And Go to boundaries once at the ground. I'll be at three. We 
I've added terminal one, two, three. Go to add physics. And we add an electric circuit. have the ground load. We have the label and the node name. We add a volt voltage source. And for the P will be two and will be zero. Our source type should be AC source. I will make the voltage 10. That's for the device parameters. We add a capacitor as well. Go to minus one and capacitance will be C S okay. Let's add an external I turn it off. Load name as E1. Zero. Voltage would be terminal voltage. Go to steady and want to add. So we add steady as an empty steady in here. Go to steady steps, frequency, domain, and adaptive frequency sweep. And yeah. So the frame will be 5.095 megahertz. Oh. 0 0.2 kilohertz. We stop at 5.13 megahertz. I want this to be user controlled in here. Yes. Okay. 
Ну. We have this one in the US, right here. Okay, just have to double check. We unchecked it. Let your car set it. This. Then after, I think we can go ahead and compute. Okay, so we have our works of the compute computing this, this is the result that we have. The stress in the solid electric potential. Let's go to the stress in the solid and let's change the level to displacement. And this parameter frequency, let's change it to a wall. On this section, and let's see the time for this. So, you can see the changes over this time. What we have. Look at the surface. This instance. This is what we have here. This is what we have here for the solid displacement. Electric potential to. Multi slides, let's change the things to zero. Yeah, as well to zero. Number of things to zero as well. Let's plot.
Okay. Like a comparing stuff. One, one, one. Okay. Let's add one D plot group. Name this the mechanical mechanical response. It's um, it should be the S U M This unit right. Go ahead to plot. We have this plot. You can add another study to this work. Add into study. Right on the adaptive frequency sweep. Where the frequencies will be from. Five zero nine five. Mega heads. Two zero point two kilo. Heads. About elephant one thing. Yeah, it's the user, user controlled. And one, but yes, one, but you. One minus nine. Let's modify. The section modified to not so to be disabled and also we go to store fields and outputs. 
Me for selection. And select all the surfaces. Add a parametric seek. Adding a parametric seek to this. So that's CS will be from 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 1. Want this to be in this unit. We want to generate default plots for our steady two. We want to go ahead and compute. It should take us a few seconds. Okay, so we go to the mechanical response where we'll duplicate this and we select our data set from the parametric solution. Yeah. We want to show legends. Legends should be at the lower left, no upper left. So you can see update on the graph. We go to the point graph. We show legends. We have a legend shown in here on a bit on a graph. So basically that brings us to the end of this section. Where we choose our space, we're working with the 1D space. So we choose 1D, then we choose our select our physics. So we want to use lithium ion batteries. So we click on electrochemistry and we look for battery interfaces where we select Lithium ion batteries. Then we move to our study. We'll be dealing with time dependent with initialization. So we add to click our study. Done. It brings us to our interface, as you can see. So we look at our parameters and we want to load our parameters. Go. Programs files, console files. Our batteries. So we will be looking at choosing uh, parameters from here. So when you go to your programs files, application, battery fuel cells, lithium and battery, to bring it to this section where you have to load your parameters over here. And you can see we have several parameters that we can work with. There are several parameters over here that has been inbuilt in the console setup, as you can see over here. So we will be looking at the battery, the parameters that we're working with is right over here. We're looking at the battery multiple materials parameters, as you can see over here, and we load it. So it brings us here. 
And when you load it, you get all these parameters over here. So this is what we'll be working with right here forward today. We can go ahead to build our geometry. We add an interval, specify the interval, we'll make it interval length, and we input what the length will be. We want to use L neg. L set. We want to add L positive. And afterwards, we build the selected and then go to right here. So Afterwards, we can go ahead and add our material. We add from library. We choose our electrolytes first. Then afterwards, we add our electrode that will be dealing with After adding your negative, you have to add your positive electrode. So, so add our MO electrode to as well. And we close this material section. So as you can see, we have two positives and one negative. We'll look at the NCA, look at the basic equilibrium, and look at the interpolation. Let's see how it looks. Let's can see. And we'll also look for that of LMO, look at the basics, look at the interpolation, and we plot to see the difference. See, there's, there's a huge difference between that. Go on to add our variables, which will load from our file. We'll load from our file right here, multiple materials variables. As shown here. These are the variables that we will be working with in our work for today. So it's very easy to locate where your variables will be if you follow what I'm doing exactly. If we go to lithium and want to add a porous electrode to our work and we select the domain, which is the first domain. We go on to choose, we look at the, before that, let's open our material section then to close the side. So at the pros electrode, we go down and we define the electrode material. So we look at the electrode material here and we want it to be, if chosen here, so we want it to be the negative electrode because this domain already is an, if indicated as a negative. And we look at the pros matrix, we want to define this. And you see it's, 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 it's yeah, it comes as detected as an unknown variable. 
as you can see over here. But later on, as we move on, it will be defined. Go to the particle intercalation. Very important, we select the material, which is a negative. We go to particle transport properties, where we look at the species concentration transport. We want to change this to the selection in here. Then we look at the particle main center surface. We should use the, that of the negative. Look at particle discretization. We want to change the number of elements. We want to make it in this section. We look at the distribution and we want to make it linear, the particle discretization. And we move, quickly move to the process electric reaction we look at the material we choose uh, negative we look at the reference exchange current density choose this Specify this. Go to lithium. I want to add another porous electrode. We select the domain. We select the first, we select the electrode material, which is the positive. NCA. We select, we change this electrode volume fraction. Press NCA. Change this to X. We go to effective transport parameter, we make this user defined correction factor should be this. Positive. And that of deficient two has to be user defined. And the same for, same as this. So we did, we did copy and paste over here. So we move to the particle intercalation. We choose our Material. Select our material to be NCA. Move to our particle mean center surface, which we change to RP positive of CA. We 
We will change the species fixed or to Baker. We change, we did change it to Baker. So we change, we change this to this. And you go to Pros Electrode, you change the material. So NCA, change the change current density. Oh. Or should be in small cups. Then NCA in big cups. In small cups, by. Okay. We go on to add an additional porous electrode material. We select the domain. Then the volume fraction too has to be changed. this at the particle interpolation and particle transport species as this. And concentration, we want to change this to solid phase concentration. Defined in here. We go to the porous electrode reaction one, then we want to define the material. So we define the material. We have to select the material for this. So our material is positive. Also, we have to change this exchange current density to this. And we change the concentration to insertion concentration. Okay, so some inputs are uh, just the small caps has to be small caps. I
So we go on to add a separator. Which will select the domain. Separator is this section. Then we replace the boolean fraction. Set. Then electrolyte conductivity is user defined. As you can see. Also, for this same for the diffusion has to be user defined. So we place this in here. So we go on to add initial charge distribution, the initial cell charge distribution. We want to make this section, the initial charge battery cell setting as state of charge. We input this values as SOC underscore cell. Yeah. And this section is also underscore there. Now this is. But we move to the negative electrode selection, and obviously we have to select this section for it that because that's a negative domain, and also do that for the positive select the section. So after doing this, we go on to check where our value was in, it's still unknown. It's because of, this should be underscore and should be correctly named. So now that all our variables are, we go on to add an electric ground. I want to add an electric ground. We select a section. So it's this point that becomes our electric ground. Then we go on to add an electrode current and a, an electrode current to this as well, which we select where to be at the fourth.
go to default and we want to click here and make our temperature T. We set it to T. Go on to mesh. We want, let's make it fine. Let's build. Let's go on to add an integration. Let me select boundary for this integration. I want it to be so it's fourth. Let's name this integration as we set the operator name to be a different name over here. How about we name it as end terminal? So we said you said that that section. How about we move to the current? And we go to the time dependent and we change to We go ahead to show our default solver. Our time dependence so uh, how about we change the times to to store as as this And we go on to add a stop condition. We add our stop our expression. This will be a stop expression. So our output at stop, we want to deselect and check this. And we want to uncheck the default plot.
and we go ahead to compute. So uh, we've been able to compute this. It has given us some results. We want to add a 1D plot group. Where we want to name this plot group as constant. Discharge. We want to add a point graph to this. Choose to end. We make a selection. We if actually can actually paste this and it'll actually be the same. I can use this piece selection to paste it. I can just click on it and let's go. We select the expression over here. Go to our lithium ion batteries. This is our expression that we should be using. Electric potential, electric potential. When we plot it, gives us electric potential versus time graph of it. Can look at the plot settings. We check and change what should be at the y and x axis. On the y axis should be the voltage. The title we want it to be this. We want to make some edits in the axis. Okay. As you can see. So we go on to add another plot group. We have the 1D plot group. We want to name this as the surface concentration. And positive.
and we'll add a point group, point graph. So we'll select this and On to choose particle intercalation. Then, is the after solid phase we have session? And then, session particle concentration surface. Legends want to show, want to name this as NCN. Want to plot this. So we have our plots here. We want to duplicate this point graph. Want to change the expression over here. We want to go to want to select the insertion particle concentration. So we have our insertion particle concentration. This is what we'll actually select for our work. So we just double click on it. It gives us this. Or you can just Type this expression over here and that will give you the same results. So we have our plots being done. We go on to the surface. Title want to name the title as want to name the y axis as Surface concentration. To do some edit editing of the Y and X axis. Okay, so we plot this, we've seen some changes. We want to add, change the position of the legend over here to upper left.
assim. So we go on to a steady solution. We want to duplicate our steady solution one. We want to name this as I will change this here to Pick the component from this first section. Material to has been changed. Go to our results. We want to add a 1D plot group. We want to make this a particle concentration. Negative. We change the data sets to this. We do our time selection as interpolated. We need to add a range and to start from zero, step 200. So that's two thousand. We want to add this to this. We want to add another range to as well. We want to start at 2032. Step will be 2030. Then 2200. Let's add it. Now we make this 2030 instead. We add another range. And this would be so set it or added our time range we want to add a line graph to this We select one. Can also click here to select all. And we have to put our expression for this, which will be
So we want to plot this. And here we have our plot. Let's check the x axis. We name this as normalized particle dimension. We check this as well. What we want this to be the particle concentration. We want the title to be this. We add another study. We go ahead to add a study for this. Then we choose a time dependent with initialization. Study two, we want to change here to so, to 600, we want to add the parametric soup to this. So add the parameter for which we want to check. So choose this and we try to vary within these parameters. Go on to study. We want to show the default solver. We go to over three, we want to see the time dependence over where we want to make the output times steps taken by solver. How about after that we add a time, a stop condition. We input the expression. Which will just be the same as, sorry, this expression, this expression. So I'll, can, you can copy and paste, but I'll, I'll type it again. Stop one that's and that expression stop expression. 
we don't we want to uncheck this add one inside We want to also uncheck our default plots and begin to compute to get our results. Again, seeing some results. So we have our results. Now we go on to add. We want to add a 1D plot group. We name this as voltage profiles. Voltage profiles will make it parametric. We add a point graph to this. We take the data set from our parametric solutions. Highlight, select this point. And our expression to will change to the electric potential. Our legends, we want to show manual. Ninety-five volume five one mix of NCA and LMO. Five over seven. Next, fifty five over forty five. Next, We have seventy five over twenty five weeks of NCA and LMO. We have five twenty five plus seventy five. Then we go ahead to plot. As you can see, we have our plot of electric potential time showing different volume mix of uh electric materials when we go here we want to change the y axis to we want to change our y axis here we want to name this as just the voltage
full page and you want to title should be manual because voltage profiles for different mix fractions and for MCA and MCA so after that we want to manually edit the x axis and y axis bring this to zero bring this to bring this to three bring here to point two we plot Okay, so now it makes it more better. Then we want to bring change our legend position. The lower left, you can see over here. So we've been able to see how we're mixing different positive electrode materials will have on the voltage on the battery during a period of time. And we've been able to plot this voltage profiles for different mix fractions of NCA and LMO. Also made a surface concentration plots for the NCA and LMO electrode materials. Also, we're able to do some parametric study on how these different mix fractions will have on the voltage of the voltage over a period of time in the battery. So I'm glad we're able to produce the, these plots in this work that we did today. Okay, so thank you for your attention by going to our model wizard where we select our space dimension. Then we select our physics. We'll be using a lambda battery. So our battery interfaces, then lambda battery, which we will add. Then we move to our steady. Then we select the steady that we'll be dealing with. We'll be dealing with the time dependent. So we select time dependent and we are done. Which brings us to our interface over here. So we can quickly go ahead to load our parameters. So we click on parameters. And we load our parameters from file. So we'll call this also. Which brings us here. So we'll begin with we'll be working with this parameter, this data, battery capacity loss parameters, which we will go ahead to open. This is all our variables in here. Go on to our land battery. Also see what we have here. We want to change the operation mode. 
to this. We want to change the applied voltage. We also want to change the battery cell capacity. We want to change the SOC as well. Then we are done in here. Go to the cell equilibrium potential. We want to clear, then we load. Our variable. From our file in here, we choose the capacity loss parameters. So we load this data. change our reference temperature to T. We go to our voltage losses. So our temperature here should be T. We'll make our potential to change to one C cups. So if you go ahead to include concentration well potential tau should be so we can go ahead and add our capacity loss It should be user defined, then change our temperature to T. To change this uh, to tau underscore loss. And we have to include our aging factors, which will depend on voltage. Change the offsets to sets. Change transfer coefficients to alpha. Want to include the aging history too as well. Want to make this like upstream. So we go back to our parameters to check.
So all that we define in there has been fully expressed and described over with a description. The variable is the description. We move to our study. I want to name this as the calendar life. We have the parametric seek. I want to add parameter name, which we'll call the applied voltage, which will vary. The parameter which would be the SOC We move to the time dependent. We want to change the, the range for the times. To make here ten. Two. Three. This way. This way, go to the calendar life. We want to uncheck the default plot and we want to compute this. So there was an error. Okay, so there was an error that was detected. So we quickly identified the error. And we would like to change this to 3.97. Our parameter value list. Then we can go ahead to compute. So that is the only section I change. I'll change to so change it. Previously it was 3.9, well now I'm making it 3.97. I want to compute. So there we have able to compute. Was, the mistake was actually from this section. That was how come we were able to compute our results. So we move to time dependent. We want to change our range as well. So we've already changed our range. I want to, now that we've been able to compute it, now we want to add a 1D plot loop. One D plot group to our work. Then Required to name this one the plot group as relative cell capacity. Then our data sets will change it to calendar life parametric solutions. We go on to add a global plot which we want to change the expression to add this as lb dot
this LP. This will go on to describe as a relative cell capacity. We want to change the axis to maintain our time and rather change the unit to A. It should be time. Legends should be manual. Show sure, should be twenty five percent. Let's see. Want to make this? To make this fifty. We make this. Hundred. Go on to plots. Then we have our plots. We move to our relative cell capacity. We want to edit our title. None. Go on to where our legends will be wanted to be at the lower left. As we turn over here. So we go ahead to our lungs battery. We want to see the change the operation mode to as well to see how it will be. We want to make it a charge discharging cycle. We want to change the discharging cycle to LB. B dot I. One C it should be cups should be a negative. This minimal voltage should be minimal. We want to include the reset period. So, want to change the rest in time to rest. We want to change the charging current to C. So these are some of the, the changes that we are making over here. The dumped battery section. We want to also change the maximum voltage to this definition. There should be curves. We want to also change the resting time the resting time in here to as well want to change it using the same resting time that we're using over here
and we go on to include the capacity loss, make changes. Capacity loss, we want to include current at our capacity loss. Want our cycling capacity to be big H. We want to add another steady to our work. We will choose a time dependent steady. Close this. We move to our steady two and want to name this as cycle life. Use the same time for the steady one. Use that for steady two. So we copy steady two. Then we just change this to one. In this part to the one. Go to the life cycle, then we uncheck the default plots. We'll go ahead to compute. So it's actually solving. It will take some time, it will take a while, depending on the CPU of your machine. It takes some time though, so we, we cannot do anything aside. We wait till this is done computing. It will take some time, but it's very important we finish, we allow it to compute, to finish computing so that we can continue.
this is taking quite a long time. taking quite a while to finish computing. All we can do is wait some time and let us finish computing. I'm sure for some computers, it will take quite a long time, longer time than this. Some too will take shorter time, depending on the run of the, the machine.
Sama dia nak tengok sebelum ni. Okey, so.
So inputs are global, but when we duplicate in here, then our data set, we select life cycle solution six. where we change our legends. Change them to one, green, side green. Go to the capacity loss. So capacity loss, then ability cell capacity. That gives us our plots. So we're able to see our, our different child cycle with the speed of child as well. So that's the result my work, the output that we got at the end of this work. In this video, we first start by going to our model wizard, where we select our space dimension. So we'll be dealing with 2D axisymmetric space dimension. Then we'll select our physics. So we go to our acoustics where we'll select, we go to thermal viscous acoustics where we'll select this first one. So we add this. Then we'll also add electrostatics to our work. Okay. So after adding our these two physics, we go on to structural mechanics where we add the membrane. Okay. So our membrane and the dependent variables shown in here, as you can see. We want to make some modifications to the dependent variables for the thermoviscous acoustics. Pressure is P, U, U, W, T. Temperature variation is T. Okay. Now the membrane, make here U, M. Want to name this U, U, M. Want to name this side to U, M. To name this V, M. Want to name the V, M. Move to our steady. And over here, we'll not add any steady for now. So we we'll click on done. No. Okay, so that brings us to our work. So with the parameters, we'll 
manually input our parameters that we're working with. So I will input them one by one. It should take a little bit of time. I'll be done shortly. So as you can see, we have the HM. Two microns. TM. Seven. Have times we have TM zero, which will be the one five zero times one. We have this is age to zero the comes in we have ten which will be pressure. external incidence pressure, then the pressure release, be zero, we have membrane elastic modulus, one if you all we have the membranes poisson which will be 0 Have the polarization voltage of voltage. We have pre amplifier, which would be one. Okay. So okay, let me check. We have this membrane radius, we have the air gap thickness, membrane thickness. Okay, let me let me name all. This is the membrane radius. This is the air gap thickness. This is our slit gap width. This will be our membrane static tension. This will be our membrane density. So this are slits. So we have our membrane radius, air gap, air gap. This is rather the 
thickness. And this is rather the slit stop. This is the membrane static tension. And this is the membrane density. This one here is the external incident pressure. This is the pressure. This pressure. This will be our membrane elastic. Pressure modulus pressure. This uh, and bring Poisson ratio. And we have a polarization voltage. And we have a preamplifier. Amplifier output. Response. We have our. We should include membrane surface density, which will be zero times membrane. Okay. Okay, so after inputting our parameters, can go ahead and start building our geometry. Okay, start building our geometry. First, at uh, uh, rectangle, at uh, the rectangle, and the width and the height of the rectangle will be we we'll add the rectangle, and the width of the rectangle will be. R, M, E, M, M, and height is H. Go ahead to build selected. We built it simply. We add another rectangle where the weight will be G, the height will be H. And this to be H M. We want the R to be at R M E L membrane G minus G. Okay. So as you can see, we have it over here. Four million and we build or So we have formed our two rectangles. And go to definitions. I want to add uh, explicit 
where the boundary will be at three and six. So this label will be the membrane. As you can see, look at the view axis, the view scale. Let's make it automatic. Let's update it. As you can see, we have modified the view scale. Yeah, we go ahead to add material where we add. First, add a adding air to our material to our, our work. And you can see the properties are already predefined for air. If you go ahead, you see other properties like the basic properties, several properties in here. Analytic. If you should plot this, we see all these values of it. So now we we'll go to move to the like stats. Let's bring it up here. We want to okay. We want to add a crown to our little stats. This is statics. We want to add a crown. The foreground. We want to highlight. Let me close this section. Now we can highlight. Our ground. We want to to be our ground. Two is our ground. This section is our ground. Go ahead, and we want to. We're going to add terminal. The terminal will be at the top. I want it to be for the membrane too as well. And the terminal type, we want it to be a circuit. Which we've done over here. Go to component and let's add another physics. Oh, wait. Let's go to ACDC and let's add, go to electrical circuits. Let's go ahead to add this electrical circuit to our work. Because of the terminal that we've added. So go to the ground node. Electrical, let's, to this electrical, let's add an external coupling. That will be external I versus U. So 
to the external device, we want to change here to terminal voltage. And we want to the node for the end, we want this to be zero. We look, go ahead, look at the external, we want to add the resistor. Resistor, the P node will be one, and node will be two. And the resistance, as we define in our parameters, will be the RP, Yeah, as you define in our parameters, when you define this in our parameters. Go to electrical circuits. We want to add a voltage source. So for the voltage source, make the P side two inside and make inside zero. We should change the voltage to V cool, as we defined in our parameters. Let's see the two stats. Okay, let's come to the thermal viscose. Thermal viscose. We add the pressure to it. We are the five section. Then the pressure we so we add the pressure and we go to thermal. Our multi physics, and we add this thermal viscous acoustic structure when we select the membrane. Also, structure is at the membrane. So let's go to the membrane and let's. So everything is at the membrane. Look at the address. The thickness offset of the membrane. We want to define the thickness to T and go to the membrane, linear elastic. Member and we want to specify the young modulus to be these are defined to be and also want to specify the Poisson ratio to N U N also specify the density to be We've already defined all these in our parameters. So
want to add an initial stress string to uh, linear elastic range. We want to define the incoming force to be T nine. No. Also, here it should be seen. And then we shall force. Go to maybe when I want to add a fixed. Let's add a fixed constraint to six. So we've added a fixed constraint to six. And let's go back to membrane and let's add face load. I think we want to add, yeah, I think we have to add a face load to this. We want to add a face load to our membrane. So after adding a face load, we select the membrane. Then define the force type. Okay. This is either defined as good. Now the R is ES dot DA. Like this. Good. So this is the new type for our force the R and the Z. Go back to a memory when want to add another. The uh, want to add another face load. Yeah, this is the second face load that we are adding. Which will also be uh, the membranes and we have force per unit area. We want this to be pressure. Add in a pressure to we want to define here as this to be length uh, to bracket P, which is defined as the external incident pressure. Over here. Oh, I didn't define it. Yeah, you have the pin over here. External incidence pressure. So face load two. Okay, so what do we do next? Is we go to let me see. Let me close all these. Go to definitions and we want to add the moving mesh. Add the moving mesh. Let's add a deforming domain, which would be for all domains. And we add a fixed boundary as well. We have two and seven. And five. So two, five, seven. We add a 
think we want to add, after this, we want to add an image, we want to add a symmetry ruler <laughs> to one. We want to add a prescribed image displacement to our member. Want to describe the prescribe the mesh displacement as you hmm. want to if the prescribed mesh displacement to be W like U and and WM for our mesh displacement. So after doing all this, we go to the mesh where we add mapped adjust the edge map mesh when we add the distribution for three and the number of elements wanted to be 30. We add a new distribution. Uh, six and number of elements should be four. We add another distribution that will be for four. If you want it to be predefined, number of elements should be ten. It should be two symmetric distribution. Let's build selected. So we have this built. Okay. Go to mesh and add on JS and make four number of bandulias should be five. One point two, you want a manual and you want two microns. So let's build the selected. We have this as you can see. Let's make the transition rather let's take smooth rather and let's build okay. So we have our mesh system built. Now we we'll add steady. We'll be adding a membrane. Okay, first we add and then she's steady. 
add first add an empty study then we'll go to the steady steps and add the stationary so add the stationary steady to this And do add a frequency. Let's see, we add frequency domain perturbation. So we have steady stationary we have frequency domain. Steady, we want to check this. This. As, as you've seen in here, then frequency perturbation, we have all checked. So we'll go to phase load two to see what we have here. Okay, we have this go to the frequency domain perturbation and so we add the frequencies and we start from 2.5 step will also be 2.5, we'll stop at 300. Okay. Let's look at the resolution. We use the solution or we can just go select now. Go to the steady and we want to add. Let's show the default solver. Go to the solution store. How the questions. You go to the direct and you want to change the exit. That is cool. Okay. Also, are the stationary solver to you know, want to make here yeah, to like this to Padisco? So, move to steady one.
and go ahead and compute our that close the sites as well. Uh, close it and compute. It will take a very short time. Okay, so we have our results as shown in here. Go to steady. Metric potentials. You see our stress. a 3D stress. That variable should add a global evaluation. I want to take it from steady to evaluation two. Now let's take it from solution one. We add an expression. Statics. So the voltage coming up. So that's the second one, and we want. The expression should be static solution. So we have evaluated scale values in here. After the evaluation, frequency, terminal voltage, and terminal charge. Okay, so generally that brings us to the end. But we can make some several plot groups as well. You can add a 1D plot group, you can add a 2D plot group. We add a 1D plot group. We 
you want to go to global expression put an expression in here 20 times the log of 10 ds that's That brings us to the end of our work. Hello, everyone. So today in our tutorial, we're going to learn how to find the electrode utilization in a lithium ion battery part cell using a model in console. To be able to make this geometry and also produce this results, see the potential distribution, the negative account for, and also the relative electric electrode utilization. So I hope we could all start from the beginning and end together. So let's start this. So with this work, we begin with our new work and we go to our model wizard, we select our space dimension. As 3D, we selected 3D and it brings us here. We select, we then select our physics. Then it lithium battery. So we select the electrochemistry, which brings us lots of options. We choose the battery interface. We select lithium ion battery. Since we've added it, now we move to our study and we'll be dealing with time dependence with initialization, which I'll add over here. So I'll save this as work and we come to this interface here. So like I said, you select our 3D dimension and we select our battery interface, then steady time dependent with initial the time initialization. So this is basically the, the interface Definition, geometry, and materials, physics, mesh, steady, results, and uh, here. So quickly go to our parameters and we select the parameters that we'll be using. We will load it from our file. So I'll load it from here. Go to local DEX, go to programs file. Go to console, it's physics, patients, batteries, battery looking up. We're using pouch utilization parameters. That is what we're using. So we load it and it allows us to add all our, the parameters that we're working with. 
So as you can see, all our parameters have been moved over here. Cell height, tab height, everything, cell thickness, reference exchange, negative electrode, all these have been added away. So we are going to use these parameters to work for our work today. And it's very important that you always set our parameters right, make sure all these things are in black ink. So we go to our geometry quickly and we select our work plane. So when we select our work plane, it brings us to this interface, as you can see over here. So we select our work plane one, and this is, after selecting this, we also come to our plane geometry, select here, and we insert or we add a rectangle since we are building our geometry. And we'll define what our height is based on our parameters. We know we'll be using these have already been named in our parameters. So W H cell, then come to our height is also H cell. As you can see over here, then we build selected. So build selected, as you can see over here. So we do this using this um, parameters. So it's even over here, we can see our W cell, our H cell, and we made it rectangle W cell over two and that. So we go to geometry and add another, we add this extrude to it. When we add our extruders, how it appears, we come to our distance m, and we set this over here. So just as I'm continuing, we just uh, do exactly what I'm doing over here. So follow up. So, so we are building our, our geometry and using these parameters. These are already defined. These variables are already defined in our parameters. So that's what we do at distances. And we make sure that all these are well are well pleased they are they would correct me if afterwards when we select on the build to 
build selected. So this is how it looks like after selecting the build, after building this. I hope um, you, you've been able to do this, this geometry as I've done over here. You can move to definitions. I would like to see the view using the camera here. You go to view skill and use manual over here. And the Y, Z address, you select 100, and we update to see how it looks like. So as you can see, you've seen some changes that we made over here after. It's changing the Z scale over here. So there's a view of how our geometry looks like. Move to extrude and select it. Okay, we have to add uh, a block to our geometry. And the width, select. Or height as well. And also our done that for the depth and we do that for our height as well, which will be this. We we'll go ahead to do selected. You can see. So after we input our width, size, depth, height, we also come here and we input the base, which is this. And after building, this is how our geometry actually looks like. So you just move the mouse around this dimension, you're able to see it in 3D how it looks like. It looks very, very, very cool. <laughs> very cool, as you can see over here. So if you if you follow me as I've done, you'll be able to do it exactly how okay. So you, you, secondly, afterwards we just duplicate this. We are block to then we just change the some of the uh, positions over here. Over here, we change it to minus h tab over here. Z to change to this. Just like this. Oh, 
over here. Yeah, it goes to zero. Yeah, exactly how it was. Then we build. So you can see that actually included another part to it, as you can see here. So block one. Okay. Oh, I think you will do it this way. You change, it's supposed to change here, and you bring it here. And you see what we have over here. Go back to geometry and build. Oh, is how it should look like. Remove all definitions and we add an explicit to our definitions. We'll name this label here as positive. Uh, and we're gonna select one domain over here. Okay, so it's quite difficult to select the domains over here. We duplicate this positive tab. Change this to positive. Right. Let's say. Okay. So that's six for that part. So that's we need to duplicate this again. This becomes a positive electrode, which we select as five. So whenever we select the two the domain, it actually highlights over here. Get to see how we, we actually duplicate again, which we name as the negative. Right? This makes us seven. Add another one, which is 
that becomes our number two. Now we we will negative electrode, which is uh domain three. We duplicate this, it becomes a separator. So we add another explicit to it. And we select our boundary. We label this as our negative. Tab and select our bundle into nine. Duplicate this, which becomes our positive. Tab end. It's number two. To this. Select both of these a negative tab and a negative current letter. We label it as a uh, negative Duplicate this. We need to form or positive as well. Use for that our positive tab, positive current collector is having to be ready. Okay. 
Select negative, find a negative positive, which we add. We will ask the metal for domains. Highlighted over here. Definitions and we have a global variable proof. We name this as cell voltage. Expression. The name as sorry, um, So, just like this. This is actually in yellow because we've not defined it, but as we move on, it will be defined. It will be defined, it will define it later on. So we add our description. It will be our cell voltage. We add a general projection as well. For our negative, we We choose our negative electrode. We should be in small caps. We duplicate this as well. And this becomes our positive. So we choose our positive electrode. Then we add, go up on to add our material from library. Go to the 
add aluminium, we add copper, Now batteries, you have to choose our uh, electrodes. We add L and O. We add the first electrode. We're going to add the uh, electrolytes as well. And the allies, you see all the properties over here. So we have to select the domain for aluminum. Our domain becomes aluminum is at a positive current collector in tab, as you can see over here. That's a positive current collector. Like you said, right here. Go back to the materials. Same thing for copper. We have to also select the domain for copper, which is our negative current collector and tab. And that for our uh, two electrodes as well. Graphite is a negative electrode. Um, it's at the positive electrode. Lights is going to be at a separator. So we've actually identified where our materials will be in the domain. We want to add a separator in our virtual model. Select the domain for separator, which would be yeah. at domain four, which is our separator. Go on to select where our proposed electrode will also be. Uh, for the negative, select the negative electrode. Okay. 
it let me add uh, before we duplicate we need to add to the electric electrolyte material so We define other properties as well. The electrode material to as well. We need to define it. Before we define it, we need to, I want us to define the electrode volume fraction. Also, define the electrolyte spinning fraction. We will maintain this as a domain, then move on to. defining the particle intercalation. So the particle material will move to the particle mean center surface. RP, which is positive. Plus um, yeah, and we move to the reference in kind of density. We want to add an electrode. This is a metal foil. Add electric ground. Okay. 
Don't add a metric. Capacity. This is Is actually I caps I so we need to keep note of that. So after defining it, you realize that this part that was actually previously uh, yellow has now turned black, meaning it's been defined. We add initial cell charge. Initialize of charge. Let's Select the demo for the negative electron selection. Do that for the positive as well. Come is not applicable. Move to yeah, and add the porous electrode it's because we didn't add porous electrode. I would like us to bring it just beneath the negative one because this is going to be our positive, so it's appropriate to positive. And that is
our electrolyte material, we choose as well, select as well, make sure we select our electrolyte material. Now it becomes clear. It's a particle intercalation. Move to pros electrode reaction as well. And we change the reference exchange current density over here. Just to check if it's actually they would every part and change all everything that has to be changed. So we go on to mesh our geometry. Like to add map. To help mesh our geometry. That twenty. It's all it goes. It's we move and to mesh. Right click and we choose the swept. to set no free channel. So under the set, we add a distribution to it. And highlight the negative lecture.
we actually choose a predefined number. the number of elements, which is 15. And the element ratio is select three. Afterwards, we do select it and we see how actually this is for us. So can you duplicate? Choose that for separator. Is that four? Bill select. Yeah, actually get a little idea, better idea of how it looks like in your measurements. We choose our separator after choosing our separator. Big number is four, which is four. So this is our separator. We add distribution use the positive electrode so choose pretty fine. Fifteen to three add the reverse direction and go four. Mesh in build for also steady. Then we add a parametric sweep.
graduate during simulation. We choose this parameter by value list one four. The time dependent as well. We change this. to Same time, same time. So I Then compute. Okay, so there was an error in the computation. It, it was because of uh, um, uh, a mistake in naming one of the variable in domain five, which is the positive. So I just located where that mistake was. It's at domain five, which is the plus, the positive. So when you come over here, we can see um, Comso has given has notified me over here that this is an unknown variable. I have to name it properly it's because this has to be like this, just like this before it will actually work. So this was actually the error. This was the cause of the error. So afterwards, if I should compute over here, it should run accordingly. So I'm sorry about that. That was a complete oversight. So this should start running. Start running. Okay. Okay.
running correctly. No error now. So in case yours uh, pops up or an error comes up, you should just check naming of your variables in the equations and some of the geometries that we've inserted. You just have to check maybe those, you did omit a letter or interchange one of the letters. So it would actually give you an error. If you, if you basically follow the procedure, what I've given you, you should, the, the model should actually work. It should run and it should produce results for you like this. So it will take some time depending on the CPU of your machine. Taking time, okay, this takes a lot of time. So actually patiently waiting for it to finish running. So we have it now. Finally finished. And So this is how it should look like after console solves this model. You should physically have this. This took about five minutes, 51 seconds. Depending on the machine, like I said, the CPU of your machine, it could take maybe either a shorter time or Maybe it might take longer time. 
Okay, so we'll continue looking at some of these plots. You add a 3D plot group. Name this potential in eighty in tap, and it should be the thirty one parametric solution three data sets. And should be zero. Show legends, you show maximum and minimum values as well. And The manual color legend, I'll give us the color for this. The potential and negative. I'd like us to add volume to it. We actually make here this to see how it looks like. Okay, yeah. But then we add deformation or selection, not deformation, add. Probably we add a selection. It's like a negative current collector and tab. But So she will make it four. And text color will make it. We have something like this. How about we find that for the Positive, so we duplicate this and we find that for the positive. Uh, 
find out the positive and see how it actually be. Okay, so for the positive this how I should look the other was a three D. But do relative okay. for example, we choose chromatic solutions. Zero. Ah, the slides. Okay, so and over here when I get the we have to choose an expression for it. Assume that you, you choose electrolyte current density. So, So, in this case, this and we able to get it. This is very you choose entry method, you choose coordinates, then you enter which coordinate you want to use to specify. Um, so, why would I separate you? I'm going to divide it soon. And we plot, when we plot, this is what we have.
3D plot group where we name as utilization. Probably the reality capacity put. We need a steady parametric solution one, then starts at two five zero show maximum and minimum values for this yeah how about we add the surface we add surface and surface plot we add generate Project positive at zero. Iris, yes, the average minus. Um, yes, we had a bridge of EPSS of teeth.
Okay, so we have this here. Just to check the expression is right in the hood. Right in the hood. So we're going to start with an add a selection. Okay, okay. It's an error. It's an error over here. I need to double check what I've done to see if everything is right and there's a mistake somewhere. Okay, okay. It shouldn't be like this. Okay, it's still a problem over there. Which will be 2D. Go ahead to electrochemistry, chemistry, where we want to select corrosion secondary. So we go to corrosion deformed geometry, then we select secondary, corrosion secondary to our work. So we're going to add this physics to our work. This will be using, using a secondary current distribution. Move to our steady, where we choose a time dependent with initialization. which brings us to our interface. So quickly go to our geometry where we add a rectangle. We want to add a rectangle and we want to draw our rectangle, zero one. Same here, we want to choose the position as minus 0 0.01. Then we go ahead to build our geometry. We go on to add another rectangle to our work where we also make a 0 0.01. Our height should be this plus a little change. We want to add a little change to our work. So one, two, three, and this four. So we just want to make a little change to the height and also to the position as well. We want to make a little change to the position as well. If you go on to build selected, as you can see. So we have built our geometry. 
go ahead to booleans and you want to make a union out of this. So we select both. We uncheck this. So we want to join this two to make it one. Those so selected and they are joined together as you can see in here. So we can see that we've joined our two rectangles together to form single units. We can load our parameters from our work. We load parameters from file. We'll be using Galvanic corrosion. Using Galvanic corrosion. I like to search, search for Galvanic. So this is our parameters, we found it as galvanic corrosion with deformation, as you can see. We load our parameters. So after forming our geometry, we go on to add an electrode surface to our work. So we add an electrode surface where we select where this electrode surface will be. So we select two and four for our electrode surface. We check the species conservation, check that Let's open to check all these sections. Okay. Then we can now go to the electrode reaction. So temperature from the model inputs, the equilibrium potential we put in this expression, right? Also our kinetic expression, we want to use a cathodic tuffle equation where we change our I not exchange current density to this change our anodic current density to this. Move forward. And we go on to add a second electro surface. So the second electric surface will be here. And go to the dissolving species where we add value here. We want to name this as MG. Then this is rho MG. M. 
So that's what we change in here. After we go to the electrode reaction, where we number of participating electrons, we make it two. We set this to be one. We set the equilibrium potential to be this kinetic expression is sorry, it's made of the anodic tuffle, which will be I O underscore. And this is anodic. It should be A and as shown. Add a limiting current density, which will define as I L I M. As shown, as you've done in here. So that's, that's for the electrode reaction. So we want to check what we did earlier. We want to cross check and see if it actually named everything as supposed to be. Our electrolytes itself, we go to electrolyte conductivity, where we make this user defined, and this has to be sigma. As shown. Go to our uh, water physics deformed, deforming, deformed geometry, check. Uh, deformed geometry. So, this sets in here. Read geometry. Deformation also sets into the non Deforming boundary. For the initial. Go to the second. Want to select only five. So we want to select only five for this. So. We want to select only five for the deforming electrode surface and we want to for the non deform non deforming boundary will be the rest as shown here So we go on to check uh, isolation 
everything set, then we can proceed to check our, our time that we want to set. We want to set our time from zero to 12 times three, six, zero, zero. And we want to end at three times 24. As shown, this could be a clear for us. So we can go ahead and compute our work. Which generates our results as shown in here. So we've been able to generate our results as shown in here. We want to add a 1D plot group on the plot group to our work. Which we want to add a line graph. Now 1D plot group. So we want to select the data set from our steady solution one. We want it from the remeshed We want to select as we selected our solution, steady solution one. So you are solver. We check our meshed. Okay. So actually we wanted to, in our time dependent, wanted to make the steady extension an automatic remission. So I have actually gone there to do automatic remission and want to compute it again so that we can get that result because we need a remeshed solution. So I'm recomputing it so that we can get a remeshed solution. This is very important for our work. I just went to time dependent, came here. Okay, now, so we have our remeshed results. It's very important to allow us to plot our, our results. So now we have our remeshed solutions. Now we go to results, we add a 1D plot group and we add a line graph now we can add our steady remesh solution so that was exactly what's needed for our work so our time selection we want to select from the first now work and we want to select here we want to select from two, four and five to four, five as shown in here. We want to change our expression in here to CD 
dot i log under e r once that give us the local current density if we should plot this is what we have we have in this plot so i want us to close this space in here then our x axis data wants us to change the parameter to an expression so that we can use an expression of x in here for our work as you can see so actually make it look this way so we want to duplicate this work and we want to start from last let's plot and see okay so from last we've had our plots we were to plot our work so let's go i i had to open a file for this galvanic corrosion with deformation which you open and add you want to view as you have seen over here so we go to want to add physics want to add physics to our work, new physics to our work. So we go and we add new physics to our work in here. So our physics, we come to chemical species transport. We go to transport of diluted species. Add to our work. Where we define the variables. We want this to be two. We want our concentration to be C M G. We want this to be C O H. That's done in here. want to add a moving interface that's under mathematics we add level sets To our work, go to the parameters. And we want to load from file. We want to load our parameters from file, which will be under deposit corrosion parameters. Actually, added these parameters to this. Our definition is we want to add a step to our work. Would mean we want our size of transition to be this. So, want to add variables which will actually go from file. We want under deposits 
fruition variables. This is not defined, but later will be defined. Later be defined as we move on the course of our work. Definitions we want to add non confidence and general extrusion as shown in here. We want to select. Sorry, we want to select a boundary for that. So select boundary. Our source frame, we want it to be this way. We want to use source map. We go to advanced and we want to set the tolerance to the closest point as much as possible. In our general execution, go to our transports of diluted species. We want to change, uncheck this convection. We want to make it migration. Move to transport properties. And we want to define the diffusion coefficient as DM. On S, that's BF2 plus BM on S dot AFL. And we want to also define. Okay, so this is one. Okay, now it's defined. The diffusion coefficient as well, DOH. S dot VF2 plus DOH. LS. F one the first start before this. We want to change the electric potential as well. We want to define it as two. The charge number wants it to be two and minus one. Initial values two as well. We want to make here C. O H O sorry, this is zero. That's as shown here. Go on to want to add reactions. We select a domain and we define a reaction should be R. Uh, okay. Nice delta.
this also is R, let's go O H, it's not Delta. Go to our transport diluted. Want to add concentration to our work? We select boundaries and we define our species to be me. Switch zero. Let's define in here. Go to transports. We want to add move to surface reactions. We want to add electrode surface coupling. Choose two and four for our electrode surface coupling. In the reactions coefficient. We want to change this to uh, local current density for this has to be local current density. Number of participating electrons we want four and so the section two we want it to be four. Go on to add surface reactions and want to add another electrode surface coupling. So this is a second surface coupling that I added. We select five, we go to the reactions. Same here, we choose the second region. The number we want to for this section, and we want to start from negative one in here. Close, go to the level sets. We want to look at the level sets model. Where we define the reinitialization parameter. It should be this max. for as shown in here. We define our parameter for the reinitialization. This side we also have to define the parameter for the controlling interface thickness, which would be LS HM. Four. We set the velocity field to this value. set this to this value, this expression. Move to the initial values and we set it as the fluid two. I want to add an inlet 
the inlets be select select two four and five and you go on to add once you've added it, an inlet you have to add an outlet very very important what's that audio So we want to add an outlet. So after selecting our outlet, we need to select which area our outlet will be. Because we've already chosen where our inlet will be. So we select the outlet and the outlet will be the outer areas will be from three, six, seven, and one. That will be our outlet. Go to our second electrode. We want to define our electrolyte conductivity. Add an expression to it. That will be LS dot BF2. F2 plus Sigma one F two BF one plus in here. Go to our mesh. We want to add a bit physics induced. For the first size, you want to make this calibrate for fluid dynamics. That's what we want to do for the first one. We want a finer one. For the second one, we want Also extremely fine. Want the dynamics extremely fine. Well work. So we move to our free triangle. We want to add, I think we have to add a size to this. Add a size to our free triangle. And this should be in for a boundary. We select two to five for our boundary. Pretty fine should be extremely fine. Let's build and see how it looks like. So, seeing how it looks like for now. We move to 31.
you want to uncheck certain areas like the deformed geometry you want to uncheck this you want to uncheck this as so well you want to uncheck these two and we want to compute this it should take some little time to ink compute to wait patiently for it to compute. No well. Now to so wait for it to compute. It should take some some time. Take some time. We wait, we wait a while for this to compute. take some time we wait a while for it to compute We wait for some time. Actually taking a while.
It's taking a lot of time. Really sorry about that. But we can't continue unless we're done computing. So I'll plead with you that we actually wait. I'm sure yours is not also done yet. So we are we almost 50% through with the computing, still computing. Efficiency rates. So wait, I think we're almost done. Almost done computing. Finally, we're done. That's, that's great, we have our results now. Took about nine minutes. So we click on Netflix, look at the streamline, and we want to see the positioning, we want to do a separating distance of about let's make it about 0 0.035 we want to also make the range okay the range is 100 
you want to plot the same. And here we have our results. We go on to uh, the surface to our work. We put an expression as one here. Then we select our coloring. We want it to be uniform. We want our coloring to be uniform. We want it to be gray as well. Go to the surface and we want to add a filter to our work. We want to name this filter as LS at one greater than equal to zero point five. That will be our filter. I want to plot our filter. So when we plot our filter, this is what we have. You can see our, our filter in it as shown. I want to add a 2D plot group. We want our data sets from our remesh solution. I think, yeah, we want our data set from our. We want to select our time from about, let's say, the last time. In here, this is what you want to select, and you want to go ahead and add a surface to our three two D. You want to make put this expression in here, and we'll go ahead and and plot. This is what we have. You go ahead and add contour to our work. Contour to, we want to change the expression in here to rs.bf1. Unit should be one. Labels should be, we have entry, or then we have labels, total levels. So let's make our entry mode levels and want this to be 0 0.5 as shown. Let's change our color table to different color. It's a uniform. Make it black in here. And but so that makes it that brings us to the end of this work and I hope we're able to plot our work, be able to follow till the end. Thank you. And please kindly subscribe if you haven't. And if you have any questions, please kindly drop them in the comment sections. And don't forget to like the video. Thanks. So we start by going to our model wizard, selecting new. So we, we select our space dimension, we work with a 3D 
which we select. Then we come here to select our physics. So we're actually going to use a secondary current distribution for our work. So we go ahead in here, when you, we choose under electrochemistry, we have primary and secondary current distribution. We have tertiary current distribution. So we go just under primary and secondary current distribution. We select the secondary current distribution. Then we go ahead to add this. Then we move to our steady, where we have to select our steady. And we'll be dealing with the time dependent steady. So we go ahead to choose time dependent with initialization, which we add. So this brings us to our, our interface, our console interface, where we have added our, our selected our physics and our steady. So we go ahead to add our parameters. We want to reload from file. Program style, console, multi physics, applications. Then I think we can search decorative plating parameters. So when we search for decorative, it will quickly search for our parameters, then we load it, we open, we add to our file, as you can see in here. So we've been able to load our file quickly as shown over here. So I think we can go start to build our geometry. We go to geometry, right click, then move to Insert sequence, which we go ahead to add. And for our sequence, we'll be using the decorative plating geometry for our sequence. So this is our sequence that we'll be using for our work. So choosing the creative plating geometry sequence, we open, load. Okay, so now we have been able to load our sequence. Then we go ahead to build all. So that builds our geometry as shown in here. Want to show transparency as well. So as you can see in here. So we go to materials. Check for materials also. We'll add our materials later, not now. So you go to secondary current distribution and you want to change the current distribution type. We maintain it as secondary for now. We'll be making some changes as well as at the electrolytes. Also, we want to change the electrolyte conductivity to user defined. We want to set this to K PPA. Yeah. 
action. So we want to go back to secondary current distribution. We want to add an electrode surface where we we'll add to our work. So after adding your electrode surface, you go ahead to choose the domain. So we want to select domain four. Just for this will be selected to be our electrode surface in here. So as you can see, there are many sections and we have the film resistance. Now we move down to boundary condition. We have the perturbation amplitude. We have the external electric potential. So we have different uh, expressions that we can actually change them to for the boundary conditions. We have average current density, total current, and many others that we can actually change. So we are maintaining this to be the electric, electric potential. Now for uh, dissolving the positing species, we want to add so we go ahead and select this area. This is where we're able to add our species. So click on to add and it has added a species to it. So we have S1 mean density as, as this and molar mass as this. So we've added our dissolving depositing species to the electrode surface in here of our work. So, like I said earlier on, we selected domain four for our electrode surface in here, and we went ahead to add the species, but we want to modify the variable for our species we want to define it based on our parameters so we go ahead to define it as n i we want it to be the r o r h o n i we want this to be molar mass of n i as in so we go ahead to open the subdivision for electrode surface then we go on to check the number of participating electrons stoichiometric coefficient for dissolving the position species as well we seen that what we 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 change when we change the variable over there it has been defined over here. We want to change the number of participating electrons to two. We want to change this side to one as well. And this is the equation that comes to solve it with. Goes down. Then the equilibrium potential changes to this Q and the NI. Then move on to the electrode kinetics. where we want to choose, before that, we want to choose the local current density. So we go to electrode kinetics, then we select our expression type to 
but the former equation and change this current density to this underscore nickel i and i non nickel and i so we've changed the current density this side and move ahead to add to duplicate this electro surface so we have a second move to the electrode reaction where we compare but before that it has to be changed the domain has to be changed that's to be changed to this. That's for the, the second surface and also the base has to also change to average as shown over and this expression too has to change to this. as shown in here. Then move back to here and also the coefficient has to change to one it has to be one. So we go ahead to the electric surface and we want to add a reaction. We've added a reaction. We've added a reaction to this. Okay, so move ahead to the reaction. Then we want to move to the number of participating electrons. We will move to the potential. We also move to the kinetics. We change to cathodic current density has to change to this change this section to this then we go ahead to the mesh as shown. So we want to change the element size to a finer. We want to build all. We want to build. Go to our time dependence, our current distribution initialization. We want to change this current to second view. Then our time dependence. We want to change the output times. Let's change just this section to 60 and 600.
then we go ahead to we can study now compute So we've been able to compute and we move to our results. So we move to the selection. We want to select just a particular area which will be the the boundary. I want to select this. I want to plot to see. So that gives us the thickness change. I want to rename this plot to the selected. Thickness plateaued. We want to duplicate this. We want to rename as the current efficiency plateaued. We named it. Want to look at the surface and also change the expression in here to CD LOC underscore ER. We've changed the expression in here. Then finally, plot final work. I shown. So that gives us our plots. Forward. Okay, so we would like to determine how to check the capacity fade in a 1D battery model. So we're going to use a 1D battery model in Comso Motor Physics to predict the capacity in the battery over a period of time and it's aging over a period of time. So at the end, we should be able to plot some results showing the capacity cycle with respect to time, how it changes with respect to time, and also the state of charge as well. So we will be we should make a plot of this as well during this study, showing the discharge curve comparison over a period of time, different cycles, and also the cell voltage during discharge for different cycle numbers. And also we should be able to make a plot of the state of charge at the separator and the Electrode boundary, different cycles, the first and the last cycle for the different electrodes. And finally, show the plots of how the capacity ages or varies over a period of time. So let's get started.
What's wrong? What do we got here from our file? Look at our application libraries. When we open our application libraries, it brings us to this place where we choose the camera on batteries and we select capacity feed. We select the capacity feed seed. We open. So when you open, it will take you to the interface and you see all everything defined the variables as you can see. Variables have been defined over here. So it's actually inbuilt. All these things are inbuilt in the console setup, depending on the model that we are using. Let's go to my own battery. Those electrodes, everything. You can see that already been the domain has already been selected. Open our particle electrode has actually been defined most of the variables have been defined. To the first electrode. So this is basically how it is, and if you should check the materials, you see that it's actually added materials to it. The electrolyte negative and the positive electrode have been added to it. Go to the initial cell charge distribution. You can see everything has been input over here. So we, we go ahead to add a charge discharge cycling to it. That will be the first direct and we select our domain as form. That is all we select for this. Uh, discharge current the shutting current is set as minus i. Minimum voltage is set as e. Control voltage is in max. A charging current to be set as this. And we include, we check this side, which is include constant voltage charging. And we set this side, which is the upper cutoff 
as Right. So we would like to start, we we'll go to the start mode and we want to start with the charge first in this section. to first lecture one where check to know you want to add uh SEI As you as you add, we want to make this here. This way. As our dissolving deposit in species we set it as a CI with different density and the minimum mass as well. We go on to check this add volume change to we don't check this part. And also the film resistance, we want to change it to thickness and conductivity that we can define the reference from thickness, which we define this way. And we also want to change the film thickness. We want to change it to total film thickness this way. Film conductivity, we want to change it to, to this. Move to the porous electrode reaction one. We check everything, then we go and we add the porous electrode reaction to the second one for plus electrode so over here to go to the electrode kinetics then we make here either defined so we can input our I, let's go SEI. Yeah. Cycle, and let's go number greater than zero. Yeah. 
this way. Move to our variables. We check to see if everything is defined. As previously, those which were in yellow are now black. Everything is now black, as you can see. Go back to Pro's Electrode Reaction Tool. And we check our coefficient over here, which will make it T underscore factor minus one. That is stoichiometric coefficient of V I theta. We go to our parameters and we check. Our T factor, that's time isolation factor. Okay, two fifty. So move back to our first electrode two so that you can set our SEI to be T and let's go factor. Temperature should be user defined. Go on to definitions to add an integration. Where we select the negative electrode. We move to our study. And before that, I want to show default. So uh, we move to our current distribution initialization. Want to check if everything is nine, but first you actually modify this part. 
we go ahead to disable our process lecture reaction too. So you could either click here or just disable over right here. So now it's disabled. Our process electrode reaction too. So you go to current distribution, then you go on to disable first lecture two. Let's open this solver. And our time dependent solver. Let's add a stop condition. We want to add a stop condition to this. That's it. Slide close. And we also want to add changes but to steps before and after. So uh, in this section, we want to uncheck this part. So I'll study. We want to uncheck generate default plot. So before you study, you need to go to, you need to check all the areas to see whether there's no mistake, especially for the pros, electro reaction one and two. So we check that it should be thing that I've done over here. Material should be graphite equilibrium material, kinetics as well. So this way, carefully edited. So this was what we made some changes over here. At the equilibrium potential it should be user defined, kinetics user defined. So we go ahead and compute.
we have our convergence plot. So we have this. So So we move on to uh, the school space. I want to add a one B plot group. I want to add a one B plot group. It's um, plots some results which we name as load cycle name this as load cycle with the title type of nine But to y axis our load cycle we want to add global we want to input this expression and cell so, our variables I saw is already stated. Yeah. Move to global. I want to duplicate this. Want to filter as well. Want to put a logical expression over here as the first cycle filter. Significated in here. We move to global two. And we want to we want to delete this global two. This meeting is global one and duplicate it as well. I want to check this. I want to see. Change this expression here to E. When we plot, this is how it should look like after plotting. We want to add one D plot group. Change the expression to discharge. Okay. Comparison. A title to none. 
Why is this? We name it as cell potential. Want to add a global. We will name this as the first. Cycle. So, so for this expression, E cell. Direction. I want to change, check. And make the parameter. An expression. So we input our expression as T as this. This will be our expression for our parameter. And we go ahead. To filter and we check this as the cycle filter. Charge data. So So this has to be let's go. It's just a star over here. This cycle filter. It's a filter here. Yeah, and we're able to plot it. Move to the variables. First cycle spotted. Go ahead to duplicate this. How about we check the last cycle? Okay. 
and we have this description cycle go to 200 thousand and we go ahead to filter and make this the last plot we see. That's the cycle for. So we make here description cycle for one. Make the comparison a bit better. Plots. This is the first cycle, and this is the cycle for two thousand for two thousand. Go ahead to add a one B plot group. Change this to SEI layer potential drop at one C. Change title. Why add this? Well, we can type it here. Okay. Yes. And we go ahead to the wood why add this as Potential drop over let's make this potential drop over C I layer. Go ahead to add a point graph. Select what we want to check. We put our expression in here. Change your parameter to one expression. Change the expression over here to cycle number. The description of the cycle number. Change this to at negative electrode. Current right. 
lecture. We move ahead. After adding move to add a total to it. So then you label this as ECH dot filter. We'll duplicate this. The selection change it to here. We delete this and here is that of the separator. Show our letters as well. We duplicate this and change this to electric light. Why are this label changes to electrolyte interaction? And go to our points. Last one. Change this to yes. We change that of when you have two, two down. Oops. 
plot, we have this. Plot, we have this graph. What are the the one the plot group? which we will call capacity fade versus time. Uh, capacity versus time. I'll try to do none. Why axis show the time um, is and show Capacity. Go ahead to add global. This becomes a kill. Minus two one. Let's go. Sure. Zero. Zero. Change the parameter to expression where I name this as T. Description on the situation time as this very sure that this to to show this as based on the Go ahead to add a photo to this. Yes. Charge, but okay. 
this and So legends capacity. this change it to this is cycle number change cycle number Version change to cycle number send this to the same two plot Add another one deep plot group. Sorry. Local state of charge at separator electrode interface. This is now. Y axis is as you see. We add a four point global. Add a point point graph instead. So select the expression. Let's see. Let's see. 
This is right. Make sure everything is right. Parameter expression. You choose C C D C dot T underscore speech. But we want to show our legend. So we need to show this book to probably. Let me retype this again. Thank you. So, legends should be key to so, first cycle. What are the token? It will be the first. Cycle underscore photo. I want to duplicate this point. And graph. I want to select. We select this and select the side two of green. This will be. Positive. I want to duplicate this again. change the filter to I want to duplicate and change the filter to last sorry last so, I want to duplicate this 
find the app too and select select it's already selected so select again here okay, so we have four one two three four already selected the way we move to want to check how variables or actually look so in our battery we go to how about look at pros natural reaction so this shows the local current density 